Daarom zeg je, daarom word je gevraagd, daarom zeg je ook ja. Ja, met al die foto's. Ja. Even een selfie. Een selfie? Even een selfie. Ja. Geen idee of het wat wordt, ah, maar... Uh, Oké. Okay. Tuurlijk. Selfie. Mm -hmm. Selfie. Hoe gaan we selfie? Ja. Wie doet dat nou? Ik af en op de spinning bike zit en ik heb niet eens die ook kijken. Nee, nee, nee. 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 Hello, hello. Uh, so just a little bit of safety stuff. Uh, the river is quite busy today. Not everyone is very good at punting. Uh, so we may crash. Uh, it won't be my fault. I'm actually quite good at punting. Uh, but on the off chance that another boat hits us, mind your fingers on the sides of the boat. Also, it is a boat, so if I move around, it will move around. It's flat bottomed. It cannot tip over. I weigh quite a lot. <coughs> Nothing will happen. Really? So, has anyone been punting before? Once. Once? Where yes. you, here? Here, yeah. Did you do it yourself or go on a tour? No, no, no. <laughs> on a tour, okay. Safer bet, yeah. Yes, it was then busier than it is now. Uh, yeah, it's quite <laughs> difficult on days like today, yeah. <laughs> six weeks off. Yeah. Let's there, we are now. now six weeks off of pretty out of practice. <laughs> I'm not just being lazy, I've been actually injured, to be fair. <laughs> uh, okay, so group at the very front of the boat, are you all uh, just a family of four? Yes. Where are you from today? Australia, okay, local then. Yeah. Come for the weather, huh? <laughs> Actually, it's not too bad. <laughs> Fair. Uh, what brings you to the UK? Uh, okay, fair enough. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, what do we have here? Group of three. Oh, it's all right, madam, don't worry. Uh, group of three? Yes. Where are you from? Holland. 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 Okay. All right, uh, what brings you here? Visiting. Visiting. Yes. Visiting this lady. Yes. Okay, very nice. But you visited before and you went punting before. Yes. All right, good choice. <laughs> uh, and then finally, hello, hello. I spoke to you upstairs. Where are hello. you from? Uh, we are from Lithuania. Lithuania? Yeah. Yes. Blimey, okay, very nice. Just visiting Cambridge, because. Okay, uh, just a sort of little holiday? Uh, no. Yes. Uh, we live in London, normally. <laughs> oh, you live in London? Yeah, okay, fair in enough. <laughs> so actually fairly local. Yes. <laughs> Alright, no worries. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, this is my full-time job. Uh, I've been doing this for about two years now. Uh, I think I've done about 2,000 of these tours. That's right. Uh, so if you do have any questions, do yell them out. Audience participation makes my job a little bit more interesting. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I shall endeavour to explain everything we can see. So Cambridge University is made of 31 different colleges spread all over the city centre. Services between 18,000 and 20,000 students, uh, which means that when the students are here, the population of Cambridge increases by about 20%. It's about 100,000 regular people who live here. Uh, hmm. Dispel a couple of myths. I am not a student. Harry Potter was not filmed here. And Newton's apple tree is also not here as well. That's the disappointing stuff out the way. Uh, even more disappointing, the university was founded in 1209 by scholars from Oxford and from France. Yeah, that's that done. Sorry about that. Uh, Oxford is the second oldest university in the world, founded in the early 1100s. Uh, the scholars and townspeople actually didn't get on very well 
uh, so badly. Uh, some scholars killed a townswoman at one point. They were told to leave, fair. Uh, so they came to Cambridge, began teaching here, met with some French scholars, and the university was founded. Uh, you might not believe me, actually it was considered quite disorganized when the university was first founded. Uh, so in 1284, they adopted the college system to look after the welfare of the students, make it a little bit more organized. So the colleges provide accommodation, food, uh, clubs and societies, and one-to-one -one tuition on the lectures which the university provides. And the university is an overarching governing administrative body as well. Queen's College is behind us, I'll do that on the way back. But here is King's College and King's College Chapel. Uh, if you've ever Googled Cambridge, this right here is probably the picture you saw. Uh, King's College Chapel is the third most photographed building in the UK. There you go. Little pub quiz knowledge for you there. <laughs> Number one and two, Buckingham Palace and Big Ben. Don't know four and five. King's a very left-wing college. Uh, about 600 years old now, founded in 1441 by King Henry VI. Uh, he was actually quite a liberal king and founded King's as a charity school for students from a poor background to receive a good quality education funded by the royal family. It does actually have a feeding school, which was also a charity school originally. Uh, you might have heard of it, not such a charity school anymore, Eton Boarding School. <laughs> yeah, nowadays the Royal Family Fund, a couple of people through there every now and again, but not too many others. And Kings do still give uh, one scholarship a year to a student from Eton in homage to uh, the sort of link. Henry VI was told the chapel would take a mere 12 years to build. Uh, builders' reputations not not overly keen on their timekeeping. Thank you. <laughs> not the first time. Uh, it actually took them 100 years to build King's College Chapel, so just 88 years off. Uh, and Oliver Cromwell was there during the Civil War. He was defending Cambridge and destroyed all of the bridges over the river, except for this bridge here, which is Clare Bridge, making this the oldest surviving bridge. First time I've ever linked those two. Clare Bridge, uh, in case you're not getting the hang of things, is part of Clare College. There you go. This is Clare College student accommodation on our right hand side. The building itself is 18th century, so built in the 1700s. But Clare is actually the oldest college on the river, and it's the second oldest college in Cambridge. So it's founded about 700 years ago in 1338 by another French lady. There's going to be quite a bit about France on this tour, I'm afraid. Um, Elizabeth de Clare. She was known as the Black Widow. Uh, she married her first husband when she was only 13, and her third husband had died by the time she was 27. I know. At that point, fairly sensibly, she took a vow of celibacy. Uh, silver lining to the cloud, she'd become the wealthiest woman ever in Europe at the time. So founded Clare College, the first college to admit women, and it's the best college for natural sciences, such as biology. It's where Francis Crick of Crick and Watson, who discovered DNA, studied. And it's also where Sir David Attenborough studied. Uh, if you haven't seen any of his documentaries, really well worth watching. down to the individual preference. I like the wooden ones because you get more grip on them. Uh, our boats are a little bit heavier, uh, so to save our backs on the way back, I'll kind of sit down on the pole like that. So I need my grip to be pretty good, otherwise I'll just sit into the water. Okay. <laughs> uh, the metal ones in general are a bit lighter, uh, but Josh is, Josh is behind me. Uh, his boat's a little bit lighter, so he doesn't need to so much. Okay. 
But you do get some horrible metal ones that are just filled with water, so they're basically as heavy as lead. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you get some really light wooden ones like this one, which is actually a joy to use. I'm a little bit worried about it snapping. There's a lot of flex in there. Oh, Hope it doesn't oh, snap. <laughs> it has done before. <laughs> Don't worry, I've fallen in twice. I'm used to it. OK, this is Trinity College on our right-hand side here. The lovely windows you can see are some student accommodation for Trinity College. It's not too bad. Trinity is the largest and wealthiest college in Cambridge, founded in 1546 by King Henry VIII. Uh, in case your knowledge of British history lacks a little bit, Henry VIII was responsible for something called the Reformation. Uh, we'll just do that in a nutshell. Uh, basically, he had an argument with the Catholic Church, so stole slash confiscated a lot of their land and money. It's quite contentious still. Anyway, he left a lot of that land and money to Trinity College when he died. They've done pretty well. They are now the seventh largest landowner in the UK. Amongst, obviously, lots of things. They own Felixstowe Ports, the O2 Arena in London, 20% of Tesco is the supermarket chain. And they also own property in Oxford Street in London and also in downtown Manhattan in New York. So Trinity College alone have a fortune roughly estimated to be worth two and a half billion pounds. And they have an annual budget, so a yearly spend, a yearly sort of budget of 700 million pounds. Tuition is of course not free, uh, but notable alumni from Trinity, along with being the largest and wealthiest, is also the best college. Uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein and Bertrand Russell, the philosophers, studied there. Lord Byron, Lord Tennyson, the poets. A.A. Milne, who gave us the children's book, Winnie the Pooh. Isaac Newton and the intellectual powerhouse Prince Charles also studied at Trinity College. Less clear, perhaps, how he managed to get in. I will dispel another vicious but believable rumour that he graduated with the lowest ever grade. Um, not true. He actually graduated with a 2-2 in archaeology and anthropology in the 1960s, but boy, has he made good use of that. I'm not really a royalist, by the way. <laughs> but we'll leave it there. I did have an argument with someone yesterday about this for basically the whole trip, so we'll just draw a line there. On the left-hand side, the second largest and second wealthiest college in Cambridge. That's the kind of record that nobody else could read about. As you can see, steeped in poverty, that is St John's College. St John's for 35 years was the largest and wealthiest college in Cambridge. So it was founded a little bit before Trinity in 1511 by the grandmother of Henry VIII, another French lady, Margaret Beaufort. She actually died the same year she founded it, in 1511, and her servant, the Bishop John Fisher, carried out the work. He then died in the civil unrest leading up to the Reformation and became St John, and the college was named in his honour as St John's. Uh, so the students of St John's are very, very lucky indeed. When you arrive as a nervous student in your first year, your parents drop you off, you're a little bit worried about meeting new people, what's your accommodation going to be like? It's not too bad. This building on the left hand side is student accommodation for first year students at St John's. Yeah, it's uh, nice. Makes me wish I'd worked a bit harder at school, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Very good college for medicine. This bridge, uh, not particularly exciting. It's called Kitchen Bridge. Unbelievably, uh, it goes to the kitchens. It might be exciting if I bang my head, but actually, in two years, I've never done it. We'll see. One day. Anyway, uh, further beyond it, also part of St John's is the Bridge of Size, which is a lot more exciting. Unless you're really into kitchens, I don't know. <laughs> 
So there are five bridges of size in the world. The original in Venice, the worst in Oxford, the two tackiest in America, and the best in Cambridge. I know, unbelievable. Wherever you go, that's how they list them. Um, this one was originally called New Bridge. Queen Victoria came to open it in 1831, said the archways reminded her of the Bridge of Size in Venice. I know it doesn't look like the Bridge of Size in Venice, don't worry. Some similarities, it's a bridge and it's enclosed, that's about it. However, Chief, awesome. I'll tell you what, it's just so difficult, my lung capacity at the moment. I had to put out a fire in my garage, yeah. I'm running a bit short on air. Uh, so, the Bridge of Size in Venice is the original one, so called because prisoners would walk over it on their way to be executed, so they would breathe their last sigh of freedom. Similar story here. It goes from student accommodation to exam room. So the students come prisoners also breathe the last sigh of freedom. Uh, if you're considering a career change, the master of St. John's, that's his private house just through those gates there, yeah. Not too bad. And as we come round the back of the student accommodation for St. John's, you can start to see this creeper, and we'll come round the back and you'll see it fully covers the whole of the back of the building. Now they built the building to showcase how much money they had to Trinity College, same reason they built the bridge of size, good use of cash, I know. Um, they actually ran out of money. They didn't have as much as Trinity. So they used a much cheaper type of stone on the back of the building. Uh, and then they realized actually that was pretty obvious. So they hid it with the creeper. And the way, the way they sort of justified this, or tried to justify this, was that the creeper turns red in October, which is when the new students arrive, and red is the color of St. John's. Yeah. Um, it's sort of backfired. Uh, the building's now grade two listed uh, by the National Trust, which basically means you can't change the outward appearance of it. And that doesn't seem too bad, but the creeper is part of the listing. So they have to keep the creeper there, which means its roots grow into the brickwork more and it's gradually destroying the building. So at some point, a high court judge is gonna to have to rule on whether they get rid of the creeper or the building, presumably it'll be the creeper. Yeah, Cambridge problems, huh? <laughs> Final college we're coming to just on our left here. Uh, is Magdalen College. I know, I don't know what on earth that is. It's pretty horrible. It's like a 1970s council estate. Lovely, it's student accommodation for Magdalen. The red brick building, a little bit nicer. That's also student accommodation. So Magdalen began life in 1470. And it began its life as Buckingham. Uh, in those days, life was pretty serious at Magdalen. It was a Benedictine hostel for monks, so monks could come here to sort of further their study uh, by reading the Bible. Yeah, pretty serious. 1542, refounded as Magdalene College by a chap called Thomas Audley. You might notice Audley and Magdalene are quite similar. Uh, originally, he wanted to call it Audley College, was told he couldn't. So he said it was Magdalene, pronounced with the Latin pronunciation, which is Magdalene. Pretty clever, I'll give him that. Uh, and that's how it's called Magdalen. So then it became a party college uh, for rich young men to go and get drunk at. Solid. Don't worry, we'll do more about that on the way back. Everyone's favourite part of the tour. This whole area here is known as Quayside. Uh, this is actually where I used to work. Some of, some people are here are nice, don't worry. Um, Quayside, though, these boats used to be used uh, by merchants who would move goods around the sort of Cambridgeshire area uh, because they're flat-bottomed. And merchants would stop here and trade with each other before they got into the city centre properly. 
Uh, after the Industrial Revolution, uh, it got let go a bit. It was pretty grim, actually. And in 1989, they renovated it. And actually now, as you can see, a few people sitting here, quite nice thing to do. Cambridge is home to a pretty uh, unique law. You can legally drink alcohol on the streets in the city centre. Let's do a little bit of dodging here. Sorry about this. Do you mind your fingers? Convenient, don't worry. It's all right, I wanted to showcase my abilities. You can just go past if you like, man. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Just go around, just go past me. So this is uh, the start of the season. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky to do punting around this time of year as you get new people who have control of giant boats like these and are quite aware of the sort of movements you might do. There we go, it's all right. So we've gone quite a long way down here. Uh, don't have a huge amount to say about this part of town, so any questions? All right, so How this channel is called? Sorry? Oh, this channel is called? It's called the River Cam, sir. And you are in Cam Bridge. River Cam. You're jumping the gun a bit, madam. Give me 100 metres and I'll get you. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Yesterday I got halfway through telling a joke and some woman nicked the punchline off. Come on. <laughs> Uh, so, um, tuition fees in the UK are set by the government. Uh, it used to be £3,000 a year. Uh, about five years ago, they upped it to £9,000 a year. Pretty unpopular move, yeah. So, again, they're not allowed to charge any more. That's the government limit. Uh, if you're a private university, you can, of course, charge what you like. Uh, but it's actually only one private university in the UK. Which is... Actually, bizarrely, given that we spoke about Buckingham, I think it's Buckingham University. And there, they basically don't care if you pass every year because it costs so much money that they're happy for you to continue retaking your exams <laughs> as many times as you possibly like. Thank Hello. You. Very well, thank you. How are you? So, as I was saying, uh, Keyside here. <laughs> You can legally drink alcohol on the streets in the city centre in Cambridge for some reason. Um, so on a busy summer's day, this is the best place to see someone fall in. Doesn't take a genius to work out the dangerous cocktail of alcohol and amateur hunting. Plus people like me who might be on our 10th door of the day, it's not if people do fall in. So on the right-hand side, uh, part of Magdalen College, this is the Pepys Library. Samuel Pepys, you may have heard of. Uh, he was quite a famous scholar. He documented the Great Fire of London in some diaries. Unbelievably, the Pepys Library has his copies of the diaries. He was a student at Magdalen College. And that's where his diaries are kept and the library is named in his honour, of course. So, 
What was your question, madam? Why is it called Cambridge? Great question. Thanks for asking. This is Magdalen Bridge. It is relevant. Don't worry. Uh, it's very close. Very close to the site where the first ever bridge over the river was built. That uh, was a fair amount of time ago, about 1,300 years, in 730 AD. Uh, it's impressive, I'll give you that, but they were very, very pleased with themselves. Big pat on the back, they called it the Great Bridge. It's pretty great. Uh, in the local language at the time, though, it was pronounced... Cambridge, there you go. Do you mind your fingers on the side, madam? So, Magdalen College, as promised, let's cover the drinking. Okay, so, as I said, refounded in 1542. <laughs> <laughs> So as we come underneath Garrett Hostel Bridge here on the left hand side is the most modern building on the river. Uh, unbelievably, it's called the Jerwood Library and it's built in 1998. That part's correct at least. Uh, it's actually designed to look like a ship coming into the water towards you with the wooden bits as the prow here. It's pretty cool. Um, this is less cool. I have very little choice but to ram you in like two seconds. Beautiful, there we go, that's perfect. No, it's okay, these things happen. These things happen. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so Trinity Hall, a uh, very good college for law, established in 1350 by the Bishop of Norwich, William Bateman, to replace lawyers who died in the plague. Here is a date I never ever thought I would know. That outbreak of the plague introduced the national sewage system to the UK. He's totally talking about that. I am. I get it every tour <laughs> so there you go, that's a little bit of trivia for you. I'm great at pub quizzes. Um, so, Trinity Hall, still, as I said, a very good college for law. It's also got a good reputation in the field of engineering. Uh, even more impressively, it's where Professor Stephen Hawking did his postgrad and is a master. There we go. I'll do another little pub quiz fact for you there, since we've lost a bit of momentum and I've got nothing else to chat about. Clare Gardens on the right-hand side are the site of <coughs> the only outdoor fruiting banana tree in the UK. There you go. <laughs> Boom. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a Japanese drooping banana tree, and it's flowered once ever in 2006. So there you go. Now we're at Clare Bridge, we can leave that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> After two years, I can really do like three different tours up and down. So, Clare Bridge built in 1640. Uh, it cost what seems like quite a bargain, 65 pounds to build. Actually, uh, the average wage for the whole year was five pounds in those days. So it's actually really expensive. This archway here is not quite symmetrical. It kind of leans very slightly over. You can sort of see it, it's not quite right. So the architect Thomas Grumbold was paid 15 pence for his work. Yep, a little bit of a rip off, I'll give you that. So, don't worry though, he did get paid. The ball of stone at the top has like a little cheese slice missing from it. That is what Thomas Grumbold took as payment <laughs> that he was owed. So, King's College Chapel on our left hand side here is famous, well, less famous because Kings kind of hate it, uh, but it's famous for the sport of night climbing. Uh, night climbing is like a sport in the same sense that like base jumping is a sport. It's not something I'm going to do anytime soon. However, invented by soldiers coming back from the First World War, they climbed up to the very top of the chapel towers. Uh, to get like the same adrenaline rush they were missing from the trenches uh, and rather than say they've done it they put something at the top to prove that someone's been there of course the first thing found at the top in the 1920s was an umbrella yeah don't ask me why uh, so the porters uh, it's their job to like look after the college basically decided the most uh, sort of hassle-free like the easiest method of getting that down would simply be for a student with a shotgun to shoot it. Yeah. Oh, no idea. Uh, a week later, a British flag was flying at the top. Very patriotic indeed. But Kings wanted it gone, so they contacted the same chap with the gun, thinking he's going to love this. He's going to love it. Uh, he didn't, though. He'd served in the First World War, so he refused to shoot a British flag down. So. The college offered a reward to anyone who would climb up and get it down. I think they just ignored the fact that only one person came forward and said they could do it. <laughs> so climbed up, got the reward, and probably also got their own flag back as well. It's <laughs> nice. There you go. Uh, night climbing is still in operation. Very rare, of course, because it's difficulty. The crowd favourites. Christmas Day 2009, a Santa Claus hat. Uh, and in the 1960s, a student climbed up and put a toilet seat, yeah, I know, a toilet seat on top of the right-hand tower. <laughs> I, I don't know how he got it up there, presumably around his neck or so. Anyway, you put a toilet seat on the right-hand tower, uh, you're not going to shoot that down in the 60s, so... Uh, Kings employed some scaffolding, and it took them seven days to put the scaffolding up. But when they woke up on the morning of the seventh day, unbelievably, the toilet seat had moved over to the left-hand tower <laughs> That time, it took them three days to put the scaffolding up to take it down. There you go, night climbing. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of the sort of difficulty of night climbing, uh, Eton Boarding School is also home to night climbing. There's actually no connection, it's just coincidence. Um, the two initials on the chapel tower of Eton are Bear Grylls and Ranulph Fines. So those are the sort of chaps who go up and do that stuff. Don't expect to see me shooting up there anytime soon. <laughs> On the left-hand side here is Bodley's Court, some accommodation for King's College students. These three windows here, one room for one person. Yeah, terrible, tough gig. Uh, basically, it was built to reward the harder-working students at King's College. So every year, the masters and the students vote on students going into their final year who deserve the honour of a room in Bodley's Court, which is really sweet. Less sweet is this accommodation here. <laughs> Lovely, so beautiful. The privilege. Yeah. I'm joking, don't I? Uh, we won't talk, I won't talk about a building. I will talk about a fact it's called the Erasmus Building. 
named after Erasmus, who was a scholar from... Rotterdam. Yes, indeed. So he studied at many universities or in many places over Europe. And the European Union student exchange program is the Erasmus program. After him, also introduced Greek to the curriculum. At a time, the only language considered worth studying was Latin. Now, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I do this spiel on every tour, so here we go. Erasmus kept a diary of his time in Cambridge. This is a gamble. I've never said it to Dutch people before, so here we go. Sorry about this. Um, mixed reviews. He said the weather is awful, the wine tastes of vinegar, but thank God, the women are of the kissing kind. <laughs> now, some sensitive ears on the boat with some uh, younger folks. I don't think anyone who's been to modern day Amsterdam would say that's a particularly fair assessment. Uh, uh, and also, whatever you may think of that, Erasmus was an ordained Roman Catholic priest, so he should have known nothing about the women. Benefit of the doubt, because there's some Dutch people aboard, he was a fussy communion wine drinker. Why not? There you go. Still, he has a building, I just talk about it. One nil. There you go. All part of Queen's College, which is this here. Founded by the wife of Henry VI, we found at King's. Another French lady, again very upsetting, Margaret Anjou. Didn't do so well with it. Queen's is spelt with an apostrophe after the S at the end, which makes it Queen's plural, as it was refounded by two queens, only went bankrupt twice. There you go, French. <laughs> anyway, uh, they have the oldest building on the river here. The really tiny windows you can see, an early symbol of tax evasion. Glass was very, very expensive in those days. Uh, so Pitt the Younger, the Prime Minister, decided if you could afford lots of glass, you could pay lots of tax. Brilliant. Um, yeah, people built really small windows and spent the rest of their money on candles so they could see. Uh, yeah, and it's where the phrase daylight robbery comes from. Boo. Yeah, that's new to Tim's tour, that one. I've got an English degree, I like that stuff. There we go. Uh, finally, they also have the mathematical bridge behind me which is famous for the best story in Cambridge, which is absolute rubbish. I will tell you the story, but before some smart student comes out, it's not true. Okay, I've told you it's not true. The story goes that Isaac Newton built the bridge with no nuts and bolts. The students at Queen's had a pretty uh, fun May ball. Uh, and they took it apart and couldn't put it back together again without adding the nuts and bolts. Great story, it's not true. Uh, whoever invented the story, needs to learn to use an encyclopedia. The bridge was built 23 years after Newton died. Talented chap though he was, it was not him. He does use a mathematical concept called tangent and radial trussing, which he pioneered, and it was built by his student. That's not gonna go well. <laughs> Smoothly done, just sh shading that one beautifully on the left side of the river grotto. <laughs> It's okay. I like hunting underneath bridges. Uh, so, built by his pupil William Etheridge using a mathematical concept which Newton pioneered. Oh, hunting mating season it is. There we go, that's alright. But you are on a Darwin boat after all. <laughs> yeah, Cambridge! <laughs> alright. Uh, the bridge has been taken apart twice, only ever by recognised engineers, and always put back together to the original design by William Etheridge. It has always had bolts. They just take lateral strain such as wind movement. The area you got the boat from is called the Mill Pond. The mill is the best pub in Cambridge. I received no cash to send you there, fear not. If you're a bit more musically minded, the anchor pub behind me, lukewarm beer and microwave food, but... In the 1960s, it was a jazz bar, and it's where the band Pink Floyd played one of their first ever gigs as students. Go there for the history, go to the mill for the beer, job done. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is Kim Bridget. И потом на следующий раз. Пока, ребята.